uh, we're 21 days out from the midterms. So 21 days from now, we will be throwing a party in Nashville. The Clay and Buck Show will. Um, and we are going to be celebrating the midterms. And I believe it is going to be a red wave. And it may well turn into a red tsunami. I will update you with my expectations every week up to and including the day before the election. Always want to say, this is predicated on, you still need to go out and vote, right? I'm just looking at the trend lines. I'm analyzing the polls. I am looking at the gambling odds and trying to assess what I think is going to end up happening. So the House, Republicans are going to win the House by a substantial amount. It's possible that Republicans have their biggest majority in the House in 100 years by the time all of this is done. So it would be a tremendous upset if Democrats retain the House. I would be stunned beyond belief if that happened. So I'm not even focused right now on the House. I totally expect for uh, for Republicans to take the House. The election in the Senate. J.D. Vance is going to win Ohio. Uh, the Ron Johnson is going to win re-election in Wisconsin, uh, and we are going to see Ted Budd win the open Senate seat in North Carolina. So those three seats are off the board. Marco Rubio is not in danger. He's going to smoke Val Demings. Uh, there is only one current Republican seat that is still in play And I think Dr. Oz is going to win it because John Fetterman is an atrocious candidate. But the only place where Democrats can flip a seat is Pennsylvania. Open Senate seat there. Uh, Dr. Oz against John Fetterman. Dr. Oz making up a lot of ground. I think he is going to win this election when all is said and done. And John Fetterman is going to lose because he's the worst candidate that either party has put forward for a statewide election in a competitive state uh, in 2022. But Ohio off the board, North Carolina off the board, uh, and Wisconsin off the board. That leaves only Pennsylvania as a potential pickup for Democrats. This election is going to be decided in Pennsylvania, which I think Dr. Oz is going to win, in Arizona, where I think that Blake Masters is going to win, in Nevada, where I believe that Adam Laxalt is going to win, and in Georgia, where I believe Herschel Walker is going to win. And I believe that Republicans are going to pick up three Senate seats. And if the red wave turns into a tsunami, Tiffany Smiley in Washington, uh, Joe O'Day in Colorado, and Donald Balduck in New Hampshire are all potentially going to win Senate seats as well. The difference is red wave versus red tsunami to determine exactly what's going to happen. In the governor's races, uh, Ron DeSantis in Florida, Greg Abbott in Texas, and Brian Kemp in Georgia are all going to win very, very comfortable victories. Um, I believe that Oregon is going to flip Republican and Christine Drazen's going to win that race. I think there's a very good chance Quinnipiac poll came out today in New York that shows Lee Zeldin just four points behind Kathy Hochul in New York, I think there's a very good chance that Lee Zeldin beats Kathy Hochul in New York too. And that means you could have both East and West Coast bastions of Democrat supremacy, both Oregon and New York potentially flipping to Republican governors. This will be the first Republican governor when Christine Drazen wins since 1982's election. Think about how long that has been since a Republican won in Oregon. People are so fed up in Oregon, they're going to vote for Christine Drazen to win, including Phil Knight, Nike CEO, who I would love to talk to, but has donated $4.5 million because he's so fed up with the leadership in the state of Oregon. Phil Knight, who founded Nike, was asked about that and said, He's way more conservative than Nike is. So my question out there for for, for Phil Knight would be, first of all, I'd love to talk to you. Come on, wins and losses. Let's have a long conversation. I love Shoe Dog. I thought it was one of the best uh, memoirs that I have read in, in a long time. Fabulous. 
But if you're fed up with what's going on in Oregon, why are you allowing the same woke politics to infest Nike as you are rejecting in Oregon? Why not stand up and defend the company that you created from the people who would destroy it on the inside with their woke absurdities? If you love Portland, you love Beaverton, you love the state of Oregon, certainly the University of Oregon in general, why in the world would you allow the same thing that has destroyed Oregon to be destroying your company as well? Those would just be my questions. 